today. From Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Jacksonville Jaguars. From one of the loudest venues in the National Football League, you get a look there at GHA Field at Arrowhead Stadium here in Kansas City. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Kansas City Chiefs. Here now to get us started is Logan Cook, and we are underway from Arrowhead. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Chiefs offense for their first possession, and it's Patrick Mahomes at quarterback. And simply put, for many, he's the gold standard for quarterbacks in today's NFL because of his ability to create, find the open man, use all the different arm angles that he has. He's a complete package, and boy, his team loves to play around him. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. They'll take that, 14 yards on play number one. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it, but a lot of it is just being actors back there. Making the defense think it's going to be a pass. Now a man open down the middle of the field. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Mahomes looks to throw on third down. He'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 40. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 right at the 40. Mahomes' throw here complete to Kelsey. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Mahomes to throw once more. Open on the left side. This is Valdez Scantling. And he's going to get this down near the 25. Here's second and nine. Mahomes going to throw. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And the top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him. And I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of havoc. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. And he pushes forward, but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. Here's where we need to see some tenacity from this defense because they've been pushed right down the field on this opening drive. They've got to find some way to push back, and that's a good first step. Mahomes taps this forward. It's a jet sweep, and he is in. Touchdown, Kansas City. 
Juju Smith-Schuster. A one-yard touchdown reception. And the Chiefs get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Extra point by Butker is on target. And it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, here's Butker on to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. And they'll be led out by the first overall pick from a couple of drafts ago, former Clemson Tiger Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They go play action now. Lawrence. And the Chiefs are going to get him. Frank Clark fighting his way home to get the sack. Throwing on second and long. Lawrence. They have pressure coming, and they got him once again. So they will take the sack instead of the penalty. And it takes another down off the series. But the biggest one of all, do you want to tell the guy who just got the sack that it no longer counts? <laughs> no. No, not at all. A leap, and he's got it. He got it. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. Pretty good play by both the thrower and the catcher there, Charles. Third down, showed a lot of trust in his receiver. And what I liked about the play was his receiver's understanding that everything wasn't on time back in the pocket. Rhythm was off a little bit. He adjusted as well and gave them a chance to complete that play. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. Now Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 32-yard line. Here's Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Back to the ground with ETN. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And down inside the 15 he goes. That good for 19 of the first down. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. And the Jaguars are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. ETN. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. Once more, ETN. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Travis ETN. It's a one-yard touchdown run, and the Jags are able to match the opening drive touchdown against them with one of their own. And that caps off what was really a balanced opening drive for them, Charles. They work in the rushing game and the aerial attack, and they end it with a touchdown. Strong in so many ways, wasn't it, partner? Their ability to throw it and run it and accomplish their goal, they've got to like the way that they started this ball game. He 
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. Now a throw here to his running back. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Heavy set out there on third and one. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And he will have a Chiefs first down as they're able to convert on third and short yardage with a gain of four. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. This to the sideline and over everybody, incomplete. No flags forthcoming, though. Maybe a break there. That looked like a clear throwaway to me. To throw once more on second and ten. Mahomes. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Throwing is Mahomes on third. Steps away to his left. Open man here. It's the tight end, Kelsey. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 45-yard line. And again, it's Mahomes. Another pass into the reliable hands of Kelsey. And they'll be stopped right at the 30. On a play that started back at the 15, they pick up 15. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Mahomes. Flushed out right. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down, but give them credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage, but it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Four yards to pick up, first down. Operating from the red zone now, Mahomes. Open man right side is Smith-Schuster, complete. And the Chiefs are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. From the two now, second and goal. Here's Mahomes to throw to the goal line, but it's incomplete. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? They'll try to run this one in, and he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco taking it in from two yards out. And the Chiefs have taken the lead. Extra point by Bunker is on target. And that makes the score 14 to 7. So that one a 13-play drive in total. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. No return here for Agnew, so they'll bring it out, start the drive at the 25. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. 
So remember, Charles, last time they were out here, they scored, but they just saw the opposition score, and they're trailing right now, so they're trying to keep pace here. They need a touchdown drive. Well, if you're a fan of offense, you're loving this, but if you're a fan of defense, this is tough to watch, and it's also tough to keep that up when you just watch your opponent march down the field on a scoring drive the last into double-digit snaps. You need a score here, not just to follow the momentum from your last drive, but put the onus back on your opponent. And that's what they're doing right now, swapping that onus back and forth. They'll run with ETN. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They're able to convert with a gain of four. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. And now they'll throw it with Lawrence. They'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Straight ahead, ETN. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. On second down, ETN once more. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Some of the most unselfish players on any football team defensive tackles because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles but when he can make a play himself as we just saw there that's a big day and he's taken down but not before reaching the 10 yard line well they were in search of a short gain on third down and they wind up nabbing over 20 yards and they'll run with etn and a nice pick up there. It gets about five down to the four-yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, want two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. Second and goal from inside the five. They go play action with Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Evan Ingram from four yards out. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. This is why a lot of play callers love play action in this spot. You just want to freeze the linebackers just for a second. Then you got a chance to get a quick pass into your tight end right behind them for a touchdown. They're going to keep it on the ground. And he will not get there. As the for two is unsuccessful and they will remain down by a point i have to admit i love the excitement of the two-point try you know to see what's going to happen and and it happens pretty quickly doesn't it you get an answer and in this case it's unsuccessful for the guys trying it completely unrelated i just realized that i stole both your pins in this last game. <laughs> my bad partner hey that's okay well they, and, and just in the time they went for two Play action. Now it's Mahomes. Steps away. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Brandon, once that one broke down, there were only so many options left for him to take. Fortunately, only first down. So he smartly got the yardage he could get and didn't worry about trying to turn it into a bigger play and end up taking a bigger loss. But here, they hope they can regroup and get something different going here on second down. The Chiefs on third down. A perfect four for four thus far. They're looking at third and a few inches. He's got his man. That's Hardman. And he will have a Chiefs first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. Mahomes now to throw. Open man completes it to Smith-Schuster. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Options galore here, second and a few inches. 
Straight ahead they go with McKinnon. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Here's a give up the middle. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. And his throw's going to be incomplete. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Now here's Mahomes. And that is incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And yeah, we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. 67 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. Lawrence. A slant to Jones. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. First and ten, it's ETN. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead it's knocked harmlessly to the turf. And this offense on third down today, a perfect four for four thus far. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, Lawrence finds the open target, Arnold. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs' 15-yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. ETN up the middle. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. ETN once more. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make it a perfect three for three to start. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown. Jaguars. Evan Ingram with his second touchdown here in this first half as his guys have now moved out in front. 
Well, CD, that's his second touchdown already. And how about this offense? Three drives, three touchdowns. An absolute total team. And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that'll make this a six-point game. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And now here comes Kansas City. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit, and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. On first down, Mahomes. No hesitations, they go right back to Kelsey. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Second down, McKinnon. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. Well, that's all about doing the dirty work right there defensively. Second and short yardage, that's all about plugging those gaps, not giving a running back a crease to run through. It has a nice job to hold him just a couple and force a third down. Hands it off out of the gun. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. This defense not budging. Back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. On fourth down, Tommy Townsend to punt for Kansas City. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. So out of bounds on the punt, and the spot will be, the side judge says, right at, yeah, right at the 35-yard line here. Jaguars offense ready to set up shop here again. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. <laughs> On second down, a run with ETN. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. 87 yards now for ETN, and he's got a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving.
On first down, right back to ETN. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Tackle made there by Frank Clark. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. go again with ETN and good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35 yard line 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well on play action Lawrence out to his left and that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. A handoff for ETN. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Seventh play of the drive, forthcoming on third and eight. Play action, it's Lawrence. And the pass complete to Ingram on the crossing route. And he'll be brought down with a first down as the tackle's made at the Chiefs 14. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. And he'll go down. 20-yard line. Sacks a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Here's a give to ETN. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup to get him back to the original line of scrimmage with third down coming up. Patterson's kick is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Back and forth, we win in that first half. This has certainly been an entertaining one to watch thus far. So let's get right back out to it as we'll rejoin our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead now, a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it's really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. On second and seven, Lawrence. He finds his man complete. That's Arnold. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. 
In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. On third down, here's ETN. Now he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Now ETN. And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there. Second down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football. Sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down, and finish this one off. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play, second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be, but still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. From the 38, Lawrence. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. An eight-play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Now Lawrence. Finds his tight end, Ingram. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. He targets Ingram for another grab. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. Right back to him for 10 more and a first. Nice job. Nice patience right there. Put him on the right side. Let him work his way across. Put the ball in his hands and let him work his way upfield with a catch. And they'll run here with ETN. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 129 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. The last run got six, now second and four. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. A solid pickup of 12 yards, and now they're knocking on the door. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And that is caught. Touchdown. Jacksonville. Evan Ingram, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars take the opening kickoff of the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. 
Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And that could be important as that makes this a 16-point lead. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. No run back here, down to a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. So here's the Chiefs offense ready for their first reps in half number two. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. On second down, they'll run it here. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, they went back to it, but the results were similar, so I highly doubt that he'll get another opportunity here on third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. They're looking underneath, and he finds McKinnon. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. First down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That tackle by Trayvon Walker. Nice play. He blows that up behind the line of scrimmage. You've got to figure the further they fall behind, the more you think that they'll get away from the run. They're trying to stick with it, but the results, they just aren't there. On second and 15 now, Mahomes. It's Kelsey on the ground. And out across midfield, down to the 45. A gain there of 21 yards. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players. Somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination. Guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Throwing on first down is Mahomes. He'll find Smith-Schuster again. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Some determined running there as he'll pick his way down to the 12-yard line. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Working from the gun, Mahomes. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. On second and inches, Mahomes. He's got it. Touchdown, Chiefs. Juju Smith-Schuster on the touchdown pass from Patrick Mahomes. And the Chiefs are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. So a strong drive here to lead off this third quarter and gets them right back in this football game. And I think we can safely call that a statement drive because they had to be saying, we have put our best foot forward in the first half, but we certainly mean business now. Maybe a better term, a prove it drive. They proved it to themselves that they were ready to go. Now Mahomes to the line as the Chiefs are going to go for the two-point try. Mahomes will throw for it. And this is going to be caught, so they do get it. 
And the two points, now they're back down to a one-score deficit. And that almost makes it a brand-new ballgame. Now it's a one-score affair after they get the two. And you have to know they were holding their breath on the two-point play because they had to have it to get it within the range that you just talked about. Dialed up their two-point play. It worked. Now they're feeling like they've got a shot at this one. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And a short pickup to about the 25. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they... Give up a touchdown. From the 25 on second down, Lawrence. And this one into the hands of Ingram downfield. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. It's a gain of 34. We have seen big plays from both quarterbacks throughout this game, and there's another one right there. Going back and forth, almost like two excellent guitar soloists trying to top each other with each additional play. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. Here's ETN, and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On second down, ETN once more. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. So what all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's dried up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Another toe for ETN. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Lawrence to throw. Caught on the right side by Jones. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. A good position to be in here, second and inches. ETN with it. I think there's a fatigue factor that's kicking in defensively. You know the will is still strong, but I think the offense is starting to bend it just a little bit, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. It's looked that way. We'll see if they can continue this already strong drive. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. One back in the backfield. He'll get the carry. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. And now they're faced with a third and one. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we've played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. 
This offense so far on third down, they've been flat getting it done. Eight for nine to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Jaguars have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. So the first drive ended in three. This time they take it down and punch it in the end zone. So that first drive felt like they were just gathering knowledge, didn't it? Just enough to kick the field goal on the first one. And the second time they put it all together and got it all the way to the end zone. Extra point by Patterson, up and good. And the lead is up to 15 now. A 10-play drive that time. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. So now here are the Chiefs as their offense makes their way back out onto the field. As this offense comes back out here, Charles, they're trailing in this ball game, And they've been on the sideline for a while. They did score their last time out, but they just had to watch that long, sustained drive. So we'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's always a, a question that you have when you have to come off the bench after having sat there for a long time. Are you ready to go? Are you loosened up? But even more so, are you mentally alert and ready to put your best product out there? Meanwhile, Mahomes' throw here complete to Kelsey. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure they only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You have the first one for the second one to even matter. From the gun, they will run with McKinnon, and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Mahomes throw complete there to Smith-Schuster, and he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Let's go. 
from the gun. They'll try to run it. And he stopped immediately there. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now they'll throw with Mahomes. Dancing to his left. And this one too low. The coverage keyed in on him since that last completion his way. He earned a little more attention on that route, and that made it a lot tougher to get a clean throw his way. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Looking to throw is Mahomes. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. Well, I think that time he just maybe held on to it a little too long, CD, because after a couple of seconds in this league, you know those defenders are coming. And how many times do we talk about complementary football? We're usually talking about does the offense help the defense? Does the defense help the offense? I think in this case, does the quarterback help out his offensive line? You only have a certain amount of time to get rid of the football. They can only do so much. On this play, he took them to the limits. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now Lawrence to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Arnold. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. it I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. And it's a good acceleration there as he's across midfield to the 48-yard line. Boy, 175 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Straight ahead, ETN. 
And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That puts a good dent into their first down setback. It's a pickup of 16. That was huge after being behind the chains on first down to make this second very manageable. Yeah, how much pride do you have in an offense on first down to get that kind of yardage? Because it actually opens up your playbook on second down. You can run it. You can throw it. You keep a defense off balance. I like that phrase, stand ahead of the chains, and they're doing exactly that. They'll run. It's ETN. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. Ten yards there. Good enough for a Jags first down. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, complete. It's Jones. Touchdown! Zay Jones, a 20-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary, a clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. On first and 10, here's Mahomes. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. On second and 10, Mahomes flush to his right. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. To throw, it's Mahomes. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And the Jaguars are going to take possession of the football. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start. It's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And they'll give him 
another shot here on the ground. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. This defense, Charles, they have unraveled here in the fourth. In a sense, it's like they're being pressed like in a basketball game, and they just can't get the ball over half court. I mean, no matter what they do, they can't get off the field. They can't slow them down. They're just going up and down the field against them. Yeah, unraveling would be a perfect word for them. They go play action now. Lawrence. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Trent McDuffie with a pick. And the Chiefs are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Well, we saw plenty of that during his much-heralded college career. He parlayed that into becoming a first-round selection. And now here he is making interceptions in the National Football League. And this is a guy that has all the physical tools, but the thing that sets him apart is what he's got between his ears. And that's the sixth sense for knowing where the football is going. Just an excellent play there to create the turnover. Mahomes will lead the Chiefs up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally, you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. To throw on second and 10, Mahomes complete the tight end, Kelsey. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for 12 yards into Kansas City first. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Mahomes firing complete. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Throwing again on second down. Mahomes. And they're going to get this up to midfield. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league, a loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But they trim that lead down to just two scores. That's still a benefit to this squad. Come up now on second and a yard. Throwing now is Mahomes. Another catch for Valdez Scanlon. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Chiefs in possession of the ball as we welcome you back. So first and 10 now from the 30. Mahomes going to throw. Finding Gray on the out route. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Mahomes now on first down. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. 
So after a rare misstep on this drive, they'll try to make amends on second and 15. He rifles one that's intercepted. And the Jags are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. Well, it wasn't always pretty, but the interception there, that means that they should get out of here with a victory. Yeah, this is not a game that they're going to preserve for posterity on defense, but they did finish it off, didn't they? They did make the winning play to close things out. They'll take that one and head to the locker room. start on the ground here on first down. Derek Nadi makes the tackle. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. Offensively, another big chunk of yardage, Charles, but defensively, they had all this talk about trying to limit explosive plays. They have not been able to do that. They discussed it all week, but they haven't been able to execute it at all. They haven't been able to find a way to slow down this offense. They're seeking answers and not coming up with any. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. That one looks like he'll throw here. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. But it looked like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Oh, now look at this. They're lining up to add three more. A little insult to injury here late in the game. On the left hash, officially it's called a 51-yard attempt. And this is going to wind up left. Well struck, but it's no good. But a flag is down here, so hold on. Let's see what this is about. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But fun to watch these offenses. They were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. How'd you like to be those defensive coaches, though? That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan. They all scout. They all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Kansas City, so long, everybody.
Tonight, from Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles taking on Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. It's the NFL on EA Sports as you take a look there at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia, PA. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the New York Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that can have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. Leading them out, the third-year player from Oklahoma by way of Alabama, Jalen Hurts. Tremendous production in college at two different universities, and this is a guy who was a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. Still much more of a runner than a thrower, but has plenty of arm and is capable of making the big throws downfield. And don't underestimate his ability to think the game. Remember, he's the son of a coach. Their first play from scrimmage is a pickup of 13. Great beginning there under the bright lights of prime time. Yeah, it takes you back to high school football on a Friday night, doesn't it? When you feel like every eye in the county is on you. In this case, every eye in prime time is on you. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. On first and ten, it's Sanders. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Dexter Lawrence able to bust free and get to the quarterback. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. On is Kern, the punter, to send this one away. And yeah, this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. First go on offense for the Giants under the guidance of Daniel Jones, the former Duke Blue Devil. We knew about the great mind coming out of Duke, and we saw the athletic ability and the potential. Watching it all come together and get better with each passing year, that's been fun. He can throw it deep, throw it short, and, of course, take off out of the pocket and beat you with his legs as well. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. 
On the ground, this is Saquon Barkley. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Throwing Jones. He's got Bellinger. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be fourth down. Well, able to get the completion, but unfortunately not able to get the third down conversion there on that play. And I like how the defense approached that one. They knew where the first down marker was, and they decide whatever you want to have, you can. You're just not going to get the first down. Excellent tackling right there. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And that is incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And it'll be a turnover on downs. But first down, it hurts. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. This early in the game, it's all about making steady progress downfield hoping to lead to early points. And you can do it with your actual play calls or sometimes something a little more improvised as we just saw there. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the six. Not a run that you're gonna write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. They hand off to their big tight end. And he will take this one in for an eagle touchdown. Grant Calcaterra. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Elliott good on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So they only needed three plays on that drive, and it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. As this offense gets ready here for this drive, Charles, you, you still wonder about that prior drive. Went for it on fourth down in their own territory, didn't get it, and then that led to a touchdown on the other side. And I don't mind the aggressiveness. In fact, I'm usually a huge fan of it, but I just want teams to always weigh risk and reward. To me, too early in this game because the reward just wasn't big enough to go for it there in case they failed. Now the pressure back on their offense to pick themselves up and they gave the touchdown that was just given up. He'll get 15 and a Giants first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Now Jones. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 10 yards, good for a giant first down. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. On second down, here's Barkley. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Off 
Play action. Jones. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. So it looks like they stopped some fighting them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. A throw for Galladay is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Hassan Reddick. And the Eagles are going to have it here just past the 25. And that's a great example of ball skills right there, partner. You and I do a lot of games, and I can't tell you how many guys look to run with the football before they've intercepted it. So that's a nice job of focusing on the task at hand and coming away with the interception. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's going to bring up second down. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes, and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. It's a second down run with Sanders. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Sanders has it over the middle. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further as they get him down well short of the line to gain. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. The New York set to take the field. As the offense comes out here, Charles, remember they threw the interception last time out, but they were moving the football down the field. Looked like they were going to have a sustained drive that ended in points, but then the pick ensued. And because of that, there's no way you can call the last drive a success. Yes, there are things to build on because they found some play calls at work. Now they've got to build another drive and find a way to avoid the turnover the plague did on the last one. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Back to throw. Jones. Underneath pass here to Vanette. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 10 yards, good for a giant first down. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. Well, let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 42. Up the middle with Barkley. They'll get this down to the 38. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now a second down and six. Looking to throw. Jones. Complete to the running back, Matt Breda. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. And he will have a Giants first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert here on third and three. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. But a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, oh, he's a nice luxury to have, isn't he? First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. 
Again, it's Barkley. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play caller to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. This will be caught inside the 10. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. His first catch, good for 14 there and a first down. They'll try and run for it with Barkley. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After 1-7-0 on EA Sports. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Back to throw. Jones. That is caught at the seven-yard line. So back-to-back -back plays each get nothing. And that'll bring up a third down and goal. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD. And it comes on the third drive, but hopefully for them, that's a spark that gets that offense going. Yeah, and I would say if you're the offensive play caller, as you look at your sheet, you're trying to find that part on there that unlocks bigger points. They've struggled with a few drives so far, finally got three out of it. How do you find the end zone? That's what he's searching for now. Well, not one you see often there as he fails to keep it between the sidelines, and that is a penalty every time. And going to give this offense better field position. And it's every kickoff guy's nightmare, isn't it? Because you don't see yourself doing this, and most of the time you don't. It's absolutely a miss hit, and now your team pays the price. Bad field position for your defense. They'll run with Sanders up the middle. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Ten yards there and an eagle first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Right back to Sanders on first down. And he maneuvers up the middle for three, and it's second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Up the middle they go with Sanders. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. 48 yards rushing for him now to this point. Second down, back to Sanders. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. Now they needed two, they could only get one. Fourth down. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is gonna do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carry. So they're content to take the three. Somewhat of a conservative call there, opting not to go for it on fourth and inches. And that's from a team that you and I know 
is not usually playing it close to the vest. It's a little bit of a surprise that they opted for the three instead of going for it. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The offense takes the field, and we turn our attention to Saquon Barkley. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat, make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can more points up. And that'll fall incomplete. He was hit just as he let that go. And now it's third down. Jones, off play action. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. They're going to try and throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. A surprising move to go for it predictably, at least somewhat predictably. It doesn't pay off. And the Eagles are going to take over in great field position. Play action. Here's Hurts. And this one is incomplete. In this situation, it's really tough to figure out how to defend because they have plenty of room to still take deep shots at the end zone as they just did there. Yet at the same time, you've got to be ready for the short throw. In this case, when you see the cue that they're going for the end zone, retreat and make sure you have a way to play forward back towards the receiver and have a chance to bat the ball away as they did there. So the penalty certainly helps them out as they come up on second and five. Throwing his hurts. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Kayvon Thibodeau, he beat the O-line and recorded the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Hurt sets up to throw it. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. And the Giants are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. So it's third and long, and you know this is going to be a pass. So defensively, they're bringing an extra defensive back and just blanket the field. And this is an ill-advised throw right here as it winds up being picked off easily. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at the 34. On play action, they'll throw. That's caught by Galladay. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Looking to throw, Jones. He'll get this one to Galladay. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 30. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. 86 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Back to throw. Jones. Wide open receiver complete. And Ryan Dable reaching for that challenge flag, and he's going to have the officials review this call. Is this a touchdown? That's the question. CD, what are they looking for here? 
You just need any part of the football to break the plane. You don't need the whole football. It doesn't need to go over the entire white line. It's just that front part of the white line. And if you draw an imaginary plane going straight up, that's what they need to cross. So not successful there on the challenge, and he'll have to be careful from here on out because he'll only have <laughs> one challenge remaining. Barkley will take it in for the Giants touchdown. Did my eyes deceive me, or was that an eye formation play that was just run there for a touchdown? A little old school eye. How about that? Was that a fullback, tailback, running it into the end zone? Well, that's what that fullback's for, right? That's why you use that. Let him pave the way. Oh, without a doubt, he's an extra blocker, and he did his job well on that play. Cano the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a Saquon Barkley touchdown run. now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. The return man down to a knee and this will come out to the 25 yard line. The Eagles offense sent to begin their next drive. They had the interception on the last drive which led to the tying touchdown so 10-10 the score as they begin first and 10. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Here's Hurts to throw. Now, a quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Quick slant here to Smith. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Hurts. Throw right side. Caught by Goddard. The tight end. It'll go down as a gain of six. And it's second down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. Hurts throw complete there to Smith. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 44-yard line. Sanders here as they run out of the gun. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. Throwing on second and eight. Hurts. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. The offense on third down tonight, just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Back to throw. He's got Smith here. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 20-yard line. A little surprise pays off on third and one. Pass instead of run. Gets him 15 yards. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And they're going to get this down inside the 20. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. All tied up at 10. Two minutes left in the first half. Still nine remaining on second down. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. They'll look to throw here. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Here comes Sanders on the toss right, and he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. Chalk that up as a four-yard loss, and now it's third down. Ready, ready. 
Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. They'll look to throw on third and goal. Being chased out left. There's Smith. He's got it along the sideline. It'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. The kick by Elliott is good. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So they are able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Giants now going to take over late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three and take some momentum into the locker room. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. <laughs> to throw again, Jones. Open man is Galladay, complete. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Well, I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. Operating from the gun, Jones. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. First down now, but the clock continues to move. A throw for Galladay is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Avante Maddox. And the Eagles are going to take possession of the football. Well, Charles, you know, so close to halftime there. You throw the interception. Not only that, you do give it to them in plus territory as well. Yeah, they were pushing real hard to try and get something more on the board on their side of the ledger right before the half. Looking at it with 20-20 hindsight, though, might have been better to hand it off a few times, hoping to get something to break instead of putting the ball in the air and, of course, putting the ball in jeopardy. The kick by Elliott is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we've come to halftime here in Philly with the Eagles on top as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out. To Brandon God. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Giants set to get the football, and they trail here as we get back underway in the second half. Taking it about the one. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. The Giants about set to go to begin this third quarter. Well, out of the locker rooms, here they come. Their first drive of the third quarter, and Charles, they're trailing in this ball game. but we got a tight one and set up to be a very entertaining second half. And as we know, partner, in the NFL, there's trailing and there's trailing, right? Sometimes you're discouraged by how much you're down, but in this case, this is a tight ball game, so there's a sense of optimism here. I think they went into half and looked at their play sheet and said, these are the plays we really like. What do you say we use them to start the second half and get us going? Second and six, just inside the 30. Looking to throw, Jones. And he's got his big wide receiver complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch of this third quarter, he had seven in the first half. It's also a first down. Barkley inside handoff. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. 
vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it. Oh, and Jones has just thrown his third interception. And the Eagles are going to take possession of the football. Well, I certainly think that we're seeing a big reason why this team has struggled to put points on the board so far because too many of their drives have ended in turnovers already, and we still have almost a full half of football yet to play. And he's going to lose a yard or two, taken down behind the line. Jalen Smith able to get him down behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of a yard. After the sack, here, second and 11. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. And he's going to go down again. The sack by Justin Ellis. So when you have good field position to start a drive and you give up back-to-back -back sacks, that can be demoralizing for a team. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. Two yards on the pickup there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Giants' offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They are looking to make a bit of a 180. They are sputtering right now. And frankly, I think it's time to call your playmakers together and say, all right, guys, we're going to lean on you through this patch. We need you to get us back on track and get us going in the right direction. So you're calling plays geared to them. Not necessarily what you look at your plays. Oh, this hurts the defense. I want the ball in the hands of X, Y, and Z and see if we can move forward. So don't get too cute. Go to the playmakers. Well, that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Off the play fake. Jones. And incomplete on the deep ball. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Call that a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. The Eagles offense now, they head back on the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. First and ten, it's Hurts. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And they'll get this down to the ten. Fifteen more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. And this time they were ready for him as they'll stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. They'll drop the throw. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts, an eight-yard touchdown run. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Hurts will throw. And this is going to be caught. It's good. And that extends their lead by two more. He hits the big target for the two-point try. Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker? He may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space. That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. 
And now this offense comes back out onto the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Now Jones on first and 10. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. After the sack on first down, Jones. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Back to throw. Jones. And he'll find Galladay. That's complete. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles 35. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. And a short gain down to about the 33. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Looking to throw, Jones. And that will be incomplete. Fourth down now looming after Philly's defense stands tall in coverage. Gano's kick is good. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. They start on the ground here at Sanders. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple here, second and eight. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. Every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. Running right, here's Sanders. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. They'll set up a throw. Complete. Smith has it. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Now Sanders. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. And a loss of three to bring up four. Here's Brett Kern now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. Here's James returning. A nice return that time of about 14 yards. And it'll be giant football first and 10. 
Kenny Galladay making his way back onto the field with the rest of this offense. Seems like the measuring stick for a receiver for a great game is 100 yards. Well, he's well past that now. And as we analyze how he's getting him, that's where it really becomes fun because, let's face it, they keep sending coverage at him, keep trying to put the pressure on, yet he finds ways downfield and finds openings. That's a really crafty receiver. They'll start out on the ground. It's Saquon Barkley. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 113 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Off play action. Jones. He'll rifle this one deep right side. It's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. Second and 10 now, third quarter action from Philadelphia, PA. Here's a give to Barkley. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Jones now, off the play fake. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. A big gain of 31 on third down. I don't care what level of football you play. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope <laughs> someone would come free. So the big play has him all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. A handoff to Barkley. On the tackle, it was the West Virginia man, Kaiser White. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Meanwhile, Jones' throw here pulled in by Galladay. And he has another first down as he'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 15-yard line. Now Saquon Barkley. And able to surge forward for about five yards down to the 10. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked in terms of the side. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. On third down, Barkley. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Going with their tight end on fourth. And he takes it into the end zone for a giant TD. Nick Vanette, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. We may be a moment because we've got a game again. And partner, except for those on the West Coast, where it will be seen in its regular time, right? That's the way it works, doesn't it? But how about that? Big time drive right there. If they're going to have any chance, they needed a touchdown there, and they went right down the field and worked their way into the end zone. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. They'll 
try and start this drive in the air. Escaping the pressure. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Another try after the first down sack. Hurts. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a level shy of the first down marker. I thought they were going to sack him there like they did on first down. Great coverage, but he found a way to move with his legs. Yeah, his ability to take off. Not only did he get some yardage back, he got a little bit extra. Really helps him on third down. Makes it manageable now. Got a man. It's Brown. And oh, he's just going to be short here. Barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Here's Brent Kern now. As he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. And now out come the Giants. And their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Barkley with a carry on first down, and he'll get about four, so second and six, forthcoming. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. There's a ball thrown right side and complete, and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there. Not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. It's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. 138 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. And he won't get close. Only a yard, fourth and three. But this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. Giving to the big tight end on Ford. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They're able to keep the drive alive seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. Where they were on the field, kind of no man's land. Do you like the call? I love the call. Almost had to go for it there, right? Because of what you just described. Too far for the field goal. Too short for the punt. You might punt in the end zone and just give them good field position anyway. Let's go for it. Plus, they were moving the ball. They had confidence that they could pick up this last bit of real estate. Now the Georgia Southern man, it's Matt Breida. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Let's give a lot of credit to the offensive line. They've been able to move the ball really well on the ground the entire game. And while that wasn't a huge one, that's okay. They'll take them in short, steady bursts. By the way, you'd be looking at about a 47-yarder from here as they come up on an important third down. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So a solid run by Saquon Barkley and another first and 10 here. 
And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line of running game imposing its will. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. They'll go to Barkley again. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. The running game's played a huge part in getting him down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving. Keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. They'll try and run for it with Barkley. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pick up a three. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. A run between the tackles with Breida. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Matt Breida, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Giants have taken a fourth-quarter lead. Extra point try, good by Godot. And that will make this a four-point game. Following the touchdown, here to kick it away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. Now back to throw. Quick slant to Brown. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Hurts connecting there with Brown for the Eagles first. He'll look to throw. Got his man complete over the middle. Brad Smith. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not even going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yard. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. And the Giants are going to take possession of the football. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. The possession switching back to the New York Giants. Another important fourth quarter series coming up. That last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Throwing Jones. On the move to his left. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. 
It hasn't been the cleanest game for him, but there was a sign of improvement as he looks towards the next one. Nice bit of scrambling to move the sticks, and even more importantly, he didn't risk adding another interception to his ledger. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On second down, a run with Breida. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing, in a situation when they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. And they give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. Brita is into the end zone. Touchdown, Giants. talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over and here a late turnover leads to a fourth quarter touchdown and a two score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Gano now to add the extra point. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. Five plays there on that drive. And it was Matt Breida who had the touchdown run to put an end to it. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. And the script really is flipped for them. The momentum on the other sideline, and now they have to try and battle back from a two-score deficit. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. His running ability has been an extra dimension of their game plan thus far. For once, though, he doesn't create any magic against a front that's prepared for him to try and take off. Hurts throw taken in by Watkins here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards is the pickup. Good for an eagle first down. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle, they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Hertz gets this to Sanders. And he's got a first down following a pickup of about 13 as we will take a pause here for the two-minute warning. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. First down now, but that clock rolling. And it's complete right back in the hands of Smith. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll look to throw again. And it's caught. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. Hurts trying to hurry up the offense. On second and goal. Hurts dancing to his left. 
And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game. And now remember, all touchdowns are reviewed. And in a tight game like this, they're going to take a good, long look at it. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. They'll look to throw, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off by the linebacker, Jalen Smith. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted. And remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back at two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case there. That's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Breida, they'll go up the middle, and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with Breida. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida down to about the 22 here. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven. Leaves him with a second and three. Now a give to Breida. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. It's a gain of four, and that should just about seal the deal. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start. But boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. Now it looks like he'll throw here. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. So out on the field now, Graham Gano in a big spot. This to put him a touchdown and a two-point conversion up. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. That was an excellent come-from-behind victory, Charles, especially there in the fourth quarter. Both offense and defense were clicking. They're going to feel good about this one. Boy, are they ever, because the deficit they faced certainly wasn't small. They obviously did not give up on that one. And in the end, how about that come from behind victory? They'll cherish this one for a while. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Philadelphia, good night, everybody.
today. From Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. This is the National Football League. We'll see Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills taking on Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Ah, yes, nothing quite like Buffalo in January as we welcome you inside a snowy Highmark Stadium near the shores of Lake Erie. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills. And we are underway in Buffalo. This will be fielded inside the five. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And a good return, able to get out across the 35 to the 36. Now comes the offense for the Bills, led by their quarterback at six foot five. That's Josh Allen. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. And at the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They start the drive with Cook, and right away they're going to stack him up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the game's first play, and it's second down now. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. I think that's the type of we'll continue to see throughout this game. The snow coming down, I don't expect a lot of big plays to be broken. Throwing his Allen on third. And that's going to be incomplete. But man, his first throw, that nearly went the other way. Instead, it's fourth down. Here's the punter, Martin, now to kick it away. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Bengals take over first and ten. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. They're led out by last season's comeback player of the year in his third season now. It's Joe Burrow. Hey, we all love a good story. And what we like even more, guys who can fight through adversity. Joe Burrow coming out of high school, goes to Ohio State, doesn't get a chance to start, transfers to LSU, not thought to be a top prospect, ends up the number one pick in the draft and justifies it. Tremendous play, excellent mobility, and leadership off the charts. 25 yards there on the catch and run. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. The pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't he? He really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame, and anytime he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is, just what you're talking about, training him to understand this is the amount you have, make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Singletary again. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. 
When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Allen looks to throw on third and one. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Mike Hilton. And the Bengals will have the football as this is taken up past the 30. And this might not be the last interception we see, Brandon. Both of these teams like to throw the football, but here in this snow, the ball's not going to always go where you want it to. And this one winds up getting intercepted. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Burrow throw. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it'll be second down. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down, otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon. to mix it on first down. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. If you're a coach, you'll absolutely take that run every time on first down because it really sets you up to go in a number of directions here on second. From midfield now, Burrow. And this is gonna be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he is going to have a Bengals first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back there and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. And he gets it to the 32, good enough for a first down. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. You know I'm old school, so I always want a hammer in my backfield, but in short yardage situations, third down pickups, I gotta have him. And he picked it up for him right there. Mixon with a first down carry. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Tremaine Edmonds there to bring him down. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Back to Mixon on second down. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That would almost intercept it, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Mix it up the middle. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. 44 yards rushing for him now in the ballgame. We are watching.
watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. They'll run it here with P. Ryan. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. Burrow looking to pass. And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Tredavious White with a pick, and the Bills are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game, and that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. And he is going to lose yardage here. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. That's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Allen going to try and throw on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this an off day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Ready to go on offense, out come the Bengals. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. Hippocratic oath, first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. Well, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. But normally, you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw the ball, and he found one of those tight ends for a very nice pickup. Inside handoff to Mixon, and he'll manage to pick up about four in second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. That one, a first down pickup of eight. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Again, it's Mixon. 62 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. throw it with Burrow and that is incomplete he was looking for Joe Mixon there out of the backfield and it's third and four well that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result they took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion on third down Mixon and he's going to be a yard short needed four but got three 
This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. They'll try and run with Mixon. And he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. Out of his hands quickly to Higgins. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as the tackle is made at about the five. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. They'll give it to Mixon. And he gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence. And he takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon taking it in from four yards out. And the Bengals have taken the early lead on the road here in Buffalo. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has his own assignment that allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. To the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away McKenzie will not return this and it'll be brought out to the 25 the Bills come to the line to start their next drive still in the first half but this offense has struggled haven't really been able to get anything going not only in the points category but in the yards category let's we'll see if they can do better here on this drive and he'll get nothing there. Stopped right at the line as that will wind us down to the end of this first quarter of play. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Allen now looks to throw. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Allen to Diggs there for a Buffalo first. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And taken down just shy of the 40. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. From the 39, Allen. The throw on target to his receiver, McKenzie. Only able to gain a couple there, and it brings up third and five now. Now Allen. And that is incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. 86 yards on the ground for him so far. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. 
Back to Mixon on second down. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. Nixon will try the right side. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain that time, as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Burrow on third down. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. This is what defensive coaches ask of their defenders every single ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Backed up where they were on this side of the field, that was a gutsy call. A gutsy call that never should have happened. Not so much them going for it. That's their decision. But where's the defensive front? Where's the leverage? Where's the low man wins? Where's getting into the offensive backfield and spilling the play? How did they permit them to pick up a first down in that situation? 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. Here's Burrow. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. Here's Piran. And still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Prior to that, they were two for two on fourth down conversions in this ball game. Now three for three. And you've got to figure their luck's got to run out at some point, doesn't it? I will just tell you from a defense's point of view, someone has to step forward on fourth down and make a play himself because they're just letting it happen to him right now. So this offense able to convert on fourth, and now a fresh set of downs here, first and 10. A handoff to Mixon. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. 107 yards rushing for him now to this point. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Here's a give to Mixon. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26 yard line. Four yards, the pickup, first down. Now it's Burrow. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. Two. 
Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Now Joe Mixon. And he's able to motor his way down to the 16-yard line. Ten yards there on a Bengal first. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Mixon. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. A five-yard gain there makes it first and goal. That solid gainer will put them on the doorstep of the end zone. More importantly, it gives them a fresh set of downs. Nice work right there. Now it's Burrow. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Bengals. Jamar Chase on a touchdown throw from Joe Burrow. And the Bengals have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well, that's just how they drew it up, C.D. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, yeah, I give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And it's now 14 to nothing. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way don't cause any extra stress on your offense. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Right back to Singletary on second down, and he gets it down to the 32. Seven yards there and a first down. Allen going to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10. And mark him at the 5. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. They run here with Singletary. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the 4. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Singletary again. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Devin Singletary taking it in from four yards out. And the Bills have got it back to within a score. The Tyler Bass on for the extra point attempt. And that one makes it 14 to seven. So the drive there took six plays and it was finished off by a Devin Singletary touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This will be brought out from the middle of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22 yard line. 
The Bengals drive about to get going. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. taken down they got him now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts they'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter sacks a growing theme in this first half this is second and long another try after the first down sack Burrow. that is taken in by Hurst and they will get him down but not before he gets very good yardage there as that will lead us right into the two-minute warning a reminder that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll check in with Jonathan Coachman from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. On second and nine, Burrow. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. A good run on first down, and now they contemplate a second and goal situation. Now they go play action now. Burrow under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Three tight ends up front here. Third and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. So on fourth down, off goes Burrow. On comes Evan McPherson for the Bengal field goal. McPherson's kick is good, and they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. So that one on target, and it adds to this first half lead. And maybe we're too early to worry too much about one score lead, two score lead, etc. But this is where you kind of start banking those points that come in helpful later on. Taking it about the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. They start the drive with Cook. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. A good gain on first, has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. From the gun, it's Allen. There's a nice move, and he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. A first and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. No shortage of impressive moments from him thus far. Now he's halfway to the century mark, and we're still in the first half. There's been no answer for his running ability so far by the defense. I can't wait to see what adjustments they'll have to make during the halftime break.
So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. The snow certainly making conditions difficult and is not likely to get better anytime soon as we turn it right back over to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Not much has changed since we left you at halftime. The snow still continuing to fall as we are back underway. And the half will begin with a touchback. And the Bengal offense ready to go here to start the third quarter. And, Charles, they've got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one, but what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, if there were three talking points at the half, partner, all of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, You've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. And it's a short one here. Complete to the tight end. And now they're in the hurry up. On third down, Burrow. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. Burrow going for it on fourth. He's got a man complete. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bengals' decision to go for it pays off with six points. That certainly went against the traditional ways of playing football, but who cares? Look at the result. Big touchdown. They went for it on their own side of the 50. So there's conservative, there's aggressive, and there's really aggressive, which is what we just saw there. Tip of the cap to them. Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And the lead now up to 14. A drive there of just four plays. And it was Jamar Chase who finished it off with a touchdown reception. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. What was a small, manageable spread to overcome? A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Allen off the play fake. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. And got his man complete. Touchdown, Bills. Gabriel Davis, 76 yards. And the Bills have cut it back within a score. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that cuts the lead to 24-17. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Still enjoying the lead here in the third quarter despite their defense giving up that last touchdown. Now they'll see if they can get the equalizer here on this drive. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. 
So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Now Burrow. Got a man open. It's Chase. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short game. And he is going to have a Bengals first down, at least at first glance, as he'll spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. I don't know about you, but I like this call third and inches and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front just go ahead and take it move forward pick up the first down and as we say often it shows confidence in your offensive line from the 38 Burrow that's the tight end Hurst with it so they'll get eight out of that completion and they'll be faced with a third and inches when you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Burrow going to keep it on the sneak, and he is going to have a Bengals first down, at least at first glance, as he'll spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. They'll look to throw. And he's going to hook up with his big tight end. Complete. Ninth play of the drive coming up. And certainly not an easy one on third and long. Back to throw. Throw left side complete to Chase. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Well, it all came together on that one, didn't it? Big time throw on fourth. Now that had to feel good, didn't it? Taking that type of a gamble there and making it pay off. What a throw. And tough as a receiver because no matter how perfect the pass, you know it's fourth down and you got to convert. A little bit of extra pressure, but he overcame it. So they convert on fourth, and now from just outside the 30, here's first and 10. Now a carry for Pirine. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. P. Ryan again on second down. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven as that one officially a loss of one. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. And he'll find Chase on the right side complete. And he will not make it to that imaginary yellow line as they get him to the ground at about the 23. Yeah, that's good for a gain of six, and it'll be fourth down. Oh, well, they go with a tight end carry, and he gets this down to the 18, good enough for a first down. A solid pickup of five, and a very solid fourth down conversion, and defensively, pure frustration. Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. P. Ryan again on second down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to be dealing with a third and seven as that one officially a loss of one. He'll look to throw. 
Open man is Chase complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. The carry here for the big tight end. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. Now P. Ryan. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. They go play action with Burrow. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. When you run into slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. They'll run it here with Piran, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Four yards, that gets him close to the goal line, but it also brings up a fourth and goal. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Giving to the big tight end on fourth. And he is here. Touchdown, Bengals. Mitchell Wilcox taking it in for two yards out. And the Bengals will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. Extra point by McPherson up and good. And the lead now up to 14. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taking it about the one. And able to get this out to the 25. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with this third down play as we've played three quarters. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll try to run for this with Singletary. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's Allen. Oh, nice move. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and that'll be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen, throw right side, caught by Davis. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Allen. Rolling to his left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. There for the sack, B.J. Hill. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away from pretty good yardage. At that time, they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 39. 15 yards that time and a Buffalo first. Andy. 
Throwing on first down is Allen. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. To throw again on second down. Allen, no bottled up. Fumble, it's out, it's loose. Fortunate to get that football back because trailing here in the second half, last thing they needed was to lose the possession. And the word I think of here is opportunity because it could have been lost there, their chance to score points. But the opportunity for the defense was to go ahead and really close this game down if they were able to get possession. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals 21. Here's Allen to throw it. Working the middle here, that's complete to Knox, the tight end. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Throwing now is Allen. And they're going to get to him, a sack. Sack back at the 9-yard line. Logan Wilson, the one who got in there and dropped him to the ground. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. Second down and goal. Allen. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. to throw it's Allen he will find Diggs in the end zone touchdown Buffalo four yards on the touchdown grab and the Bills have made it a one score game again here in the fourth so how about that for an answer they get the touchdown there and it's back to a one score game here in the fourth and that's what these guys have done all game long because they've scratched and slashed their way to stay in this game and by now we should all realize they're not going away now the pressure again swings to their defense because they're going to need to find some way to get the ball back the extra point by bass up and good and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter the touchdown bass to kick it away and a fair catch taken here at the five yard line huh interesting now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here they have the lead obviously late in the game I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. A Burroughs throw here. Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. Now this is picked up by the Bills, and he'll bring it back to the nine-yard line. Will that take away part? And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. And the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. Say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The Burrow going to keep it himself. And yeah, they will touch him down, but not before he gets the first. One yard is the gain. And it's good enough for a Cincinnati first down. Now a handoff running through the middle. Tackle made there by Jordan Poyer. 
A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. On third down, they're going to run for it here. And this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down, right near the 24. It'll be a gain of four, but it won't be enough. It leaves him with a fourth down now. They're going to run this with a tight end. And he's got a Bengals first down as the tackle made just shy of the 30. Well executed fourth down conversion. Yeah, I know this will surprise you. But I've actually done a little bit of reading lately. And all the analytics say that you should go for it more on fourth down. I think someone has referred back to their analytics coach. Maybe he's got a pipeline into the booth because that was a really good play call. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big pickup of 38. That was awfully nice. Hit him in stride and off he went. It was almost like the ball hitting him was like him receiving a baton and he was running the anchor leg in a relay race. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. Seven yards on the pickup there and it'll leave him with a second and three. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and ten. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there, and the defense was ready to jump in and deny it, and they did. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Got a man. It's Chase. He completes it. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Fourth quarter down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. They'll go to Piran, try to pound it in. And he gets halfway there down to the one-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Again, here's Piran. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Samaj Piran punching it in from a yard away. And the Bengals have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. And, oh, it's no good on the PAT. So they can't add on here. And our score is going to stay right where it is. Kevin McPherson, the kickoff for Cincinnati. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. McKenzie will not return this, and it will be brought out to the 25. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. A lot of time for this unit to game plan on the sideline after that drive that they watched the other side just score. But remember, last time they were out, they scored as well. We'll see if they can seize that momentum right back. And they have had a lot of time to cool off from reaching the end zone the last time. So have they been able to keep themselves mentally sharp and into this game, even though they haven't been on the field? And you and I both know, one big play, though, gets them right back up to that level. Oh, Allen cannot get away, and down he goes. And we've reached the one-minute mark in this game. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. He's got a man complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. 
Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing is Allen. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle with a clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So with just a few ticks left, they need a miracle. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. What a game we were treated to in this one. And on that final play, they had a chance. They had the ball just beyond midfield for one final shot, but couldn't get it done, and they suffered the loss. Yeah, and you mentioned how they had a chance on that final play, and getting it to midfield gave them that opportunity, hoping they could find their way to the end zone and make that miracle happen. A really good ending to an entertaining contest, though. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Buffalo.